but it has also, everything. I it has it. everything, but also I will say this. I tried out the uh, current, uh, what's it called in Hearthstone, their like weekly thing. Oh, that the they tavern, do. Brawl? tavern Brawl? Yes, this week's Tavern Brawl is a ton of fun. But I'm... it takes forever. Uh. What? No, it was great. I won in three turns because I did so well, the guy gave up. You killed him, you <laughs> killed him with, with the chickens? No. So <laughs> on my first draft, I drew a murloc that summons an additional murloc when you play it. Oh. So I played that as my as my first, and then I played the coin, and then I played a chicken, and then the next round, so it then went to him, and he didn't play anything, because, I don't know, he's, I th actually, he played a chicken. So then it came back to me, and I got the coin again, so I used the coin, played a whole hand worth of stuff, I think I played like a, like a three mana card, and apparently that was enough for him to just be like, nope. I'm not going to win. I'm not going to beat this. <laughs> so wow. he was done. And Doesn't have much resolve there. It was it was all the chickens and the murlocs, and he just ran away screaming. Yeah, I really like this. I wish this was a game I could opt into on the regular. I really like this Tavern Brawl. For whatever reason, it just completely clicked with me. I wish I could go into it whenever I wanted. Well, the Tavern Brawls are my favorite part of about Hearthstone because I don't like building decks. And so ones like this where they just give you cards, I'm all I'm all for, you know. Yeah. Maybe I should try that. Yes, you should try that. Should. The tavern brawls are really fun, Ben. Okay. Uh, no promises. I might look into it. And also, if you like it, because I don't want you to spend money before you think you might be able to like something. Okay. But the new adventure is fantastic. Well, I mean, you get a murloc with a monocle who's a professor. I oh, and I got to play awesome. his card. What does uh, this card do? It is an awful card, <laughs> but it's, <laughs> honestly, it's an awful card, but I misused it, and I could have won the match that I was playing with him had I used it correctly. But basically, he changes your hero power. Oh, really? Yeah. So To something better? It changes it, it seems, to just other hero powers that are in the game. So, oh, man. Don't, well, you know what? I'm not even going to talk to you because now I've just found out from the chat that there's no way you're going to ever do it. <laughs> All right, cool. You have to get to level 20 before I can tavern brawl. Woo! Oh, well, I don't even know if I'm level 10 yet. Woo! <laughs> well, thanks, Draven. You lost him. Uh, but yeah, you get, you get to pick uh, other hero powers. So I switched to the warrior, and then I opted to play more cards instead of giving myself armor. And he was able <laughs> to beat me because of the amount of health he was he's able like, to take off. He's like, oh, he's a warrior. This is going to be impossible. Oh, no, he's just a moron. Yeah, he's just an idiot. So <laughs> it's fine. It, it's it fine. Happens. It happens. It's not a great card, but it is a murloc with a monocle. And, you know, what are you going to do? That's pretty great. Yeah, pretty much. Um, going back to raiding and WoW, though, Bim, seriously, I am very impressed that you guys have uh, downed normal Archimon. That is fantastic. I am extremely happy for you. It's a great team. It's, you know, and I am totally fine with the normal kill. The only reason I would want to go harder is because of the moose. Mm -hmm. um, I haven't ever been a heroic raider. I've always been about the normal modes. I've been raiding since um, uh, Burning Crusade. Mm -hmm. And um, yeah, so I mean, I don't feel the need to push progression. I just like to have relaxing times and raid. And, and you know, if we wipe a bunch of times, that's okay as long as we make some progress every yeah. now and then. You know, that's that's my comfort level. Yeah, that works. So how was how was Furt last night? She so John, you, what ben, did you because, what, uh, John, what did you do last night? <laughs> did you guys miss it? No, we raided. John, what did you do last night? It must have uh, been, I think you had a great time and, and a lot more fun than we had. Okay, I need to ask you about this. I Because, okay, once I stopped raiding, I didn't keep checking out the forums. Apparently, apparently, that is not true for all of us who have stopped raiding because I heard from Scott that Tetsemi went on a tirade in the forums. I wouldn't call it a tirade. I would say that 
It was an impassioned speech. It was a... It, it, the best way I could put it is it was a come to Jesus moment. Oh. Yeah, because we've been having issues of, I mean, attendance is part of it. Uh, personal responsibility is part of it. Coming to raid with the appropriate things is part of it. Um, I mean, there there's a lot of things going around that are making us like just either barely able to beat something that we should be able to at our gear level or we just have an entire night of wiping and people aren't focusing and things like that and so basically it was just like a hey guys there's some serious crap going on here that we need to kind of discuss so we started a, a dialogue in forum in the forums and started talking and everything like that so it, it's been frustrating for a little bit now, and the sad thing is, is I think it's come to the point where we realize that even though we can beat bosses up to the point where we've gotten, we can't do it consistently enough in the like higher level tier of it, because we just need to go back and start gearing up, and we can't keep doing it if we have a different raid comp every single time we raid, because, you know, it, it's flex raiding, so, you know... The amount of people can change willy nilly all the time. So that means that, you know, people were thinking, well, I could show up late or I can leave early and things like that. So we're constantly adjusting our comp. Right. That makes it incredibly hard for us to be consistent and actually do stuff. Even more so, people are switching roles because more people show up or less people show up, you know, depending on you know, what types of roles are there and everything like that. So it's constantly shifting so much. And I mean, I understand real life happens. That's great. Um, real life happens to me. That's great too, because I have a life, but it, it's coming to the point where people need to kind of decide if rating is something that you want to do, maybe don't have a football game on another monitor that you're paying more attention to than what you're doing. <laughs> well, geez, that's what a shocking bit of information that is. Yeah, you know, just things like that. I mean, we get together, we try to have fun and everything, but it's not as much fun when you're constantly hitting a brick wall because people aren't on board with what they're actually doing. So let me ask you something to, okay. to make this less personal about necessarily the raid team and maybe bring it more to WoW in general for other people who aren't on the raid team. Um, do you think that what you are experiencing is a case of people not treating it with the right level of seriousness, or do you think it is a case of the content, what's supposed to be for casual players, not being tuned properly to casual? Or do you think it's probably both going together a little bit? Well, and see, that's the thing. You know, I've talked about on the show multiple times about normal raid difficulty i don't think is tuned correctly you know we we talked about that compared to flex from last expansion it feels like it is so much harder based on personal responsibility where you can't have you know the more hardcore people helping bring the you know less geared less experienced people along with you so the fact that if someone isn't completely on point and they you know, trail a, a beam of fire through the entire group and the healers lose a ton of mana because they can't keep up with that or someone's in the wrong position. You know, it it just doesn't seem like that is tuned perfectly. But so, that on top of that, um, this is also the last, you know, content patch of the expansion. It's the last thing to do. And we see how far away Legion is. I think a lot of people are actually losing interest in it as well. So, Ben, let me ask you, because what, what Ben is presenting is kind of what I have just now dubbed flexible flexible, where we had this really rigid rating structure for a good long while where you had to have X amount of people, and then we were given a little bit more freedom where, okay, well, it can fluctuate, you can have more, you can have less, it can move around a little bit. But now it almost sounds like people are now kind of taking that flexibility to another level of, 
oh, I can show up for a couple hours or I can show up this week and not next week and then on again, off again and all of that. For your team, are you noticing that happening or are you kind of a, a solid bunch where it's the same people each week? Um, there's always changing of people. I mean, the whole reason that I got onto the team was because they had lost enough people um, over the course of this past year that they needed to recruit. So I've only been with their team for a couple months. Mm -hmm. um, and yeah, I think there is a bit of taking that flexibility to too far of a le level. Uh, like Stage Time pointed out in the chat room, the, the, the um, number of healers that you have uh, in your team uh, in relation to how many people are on your team, that could just totally throw your balance off. Mm -hmm. Uh, usually I'm DPSing, so I don't really notice uh, when they do ask me to switch to healing because I, I play on my um, Enhancement Shaman, which I also have Resto spec because actually, historically, I've been usually a healer in raids. Okay. And so when they have me switch over to a healer, um, well, I don't have a force set, so I'm like way behind the other healers and I just can't keep people alive. Yeah. Uh, so um, I, I think, I, I think, yeah, there is, there is too much fluctuation going on. Cause I remember back when I would do 10 man rating and we'd have a very set uh, roster, it would just be a s certain people and we would always have the right proportion of healers to tanks to DPS. And it just, you got so used to how a fight would go with those set people mm -hmm. that it became very easy to to essentially get to farming it. But but yeah, there is a lot more variability these days with flex mode. Yeah, and you know, that's, that's something I have to agree with too, is when we have all of our healers, uh, we have more healers than we need. I think, I think we max out at like six. That's that's way too many. You need DPS oh, yeah. in there to help, like actually, you know, beat up some of these bosses. To the point where last night on one of our attempts, because um, you know we had someone come in later in, well, after we had started the raid, so they came in. So I switched to DPS on my monk, which I'm a healer, but I'm still there. So it's either I heal and we just blanket and don't have enough DPS to beat the enrage timer. Or I try to contribute what I can, which, I mean, on my monk, I did better than some people, but that's because their specs have been nerfed so heavily that just because I have two tier pieces that, you know, switch over when I switch specs and, like, I've upgraded some baleful cloaks or something, you know, I, I have decent gear for melee, it it's just weird because it throws everything off. The people who are used to my heel styling have to adjust to someone else's and it, it, it changes so much that it it's, it's too flexible at this point. Maybe this is uh, just echoing kind of what you're saying and all of that, but uh, just to, to kind of get a feel for it. One thing that I noticed when we were doing siege of Orgrimmar um, is that it felt like we had a core group of people that were there, generally speaking, every week mm -hmm. that did very reliable damage uh, or healing or, you know, whatever, imp or tanking. <laughs> they <did laughs> they got good, punched real they well. They did good tanking. Um, <laughs> but, you know, whatever their assigned role was, they did really well. Mm -hmm. um, and they were there consistently, um, you know, life happens, wasn't 100% of the time, but yeah. generally speaking, you could count on them. And then we had kind of like the next stage, which was people who were there semi-frequently, and then kind of a few on the outside that were kind of on the periphery, and maybe they'd be there, maybe they wouldn't. Um, but what I noticed is that that core group through skill but also eventually through gear and diligence and all of that got good enough to where it kind of didn't matter what happened on the periphery we were still able to clear and progress in content mm -hmm. do you think that's what is lacking right now in your raid experience that there's just not enough in that core group that 
you can rely on to make up for what's going on on the people that are drifting in and out? Well, let me... Okay, I'm... First of all, because I know some of the our raid team does listen to this show, and this is nothing against anybody. <laughs> As everybody knows, I'm pretty welcoming, and even if I get kind of grumpy during raid, I'm still happy that people are there, because these are my friends, this is my in-game family, and we have a lot of fun together. Um, that being said, there are times when, if there's less of us, we do better. Because right. it is just that core group. Uh, going back to Siege of Orgrimmar, I know that you saw this happen. Um, when it was just, like you know, we were just like scratching by to get into raid. When we had like maybe 12 people or something like that, yeah. we would just blow through the raid lockout. Yeah. But start adding more, adding more, adding more. And that's when we need to make sure that we can balance the healers. That we have enough DPS and... I mean, it was a constant debate of, okay, if this person is here, are they contributing enough DPS to bypass the fact that them in the group added that much to the boss? And the good thing is, is that with Siege of Orgrimmar, at least, at that point, we were able to go in and upgrade our gear with Valor, and that helped a lot of us, you know, kind of carry those people a little bit more. Now, I don't know if it's because it's closer to when Valor upgrades have actually been added that not a lot of people have had a chance to, or if it's just the way that these mechanics work, if there's so... Because, again, so much more personal responsibility. If I am just geared up to the T, I'm best in slot everything, everything's upgraded 100%, if you're not getting out of the fire, my gear isn't going to help you. Right. Right. So I don't know exactly where it's going with that, but hopefully as time goes on, either due to everybody actually being consistently there and seeing some of these insane fights near the end, we're getting the dance faster and and quicker, which is the same word, faster and and better, (laughs) um, we'll be able to get through this stuff. Yeah, and I was just about to say, it, it is a dance. It's totally... The whole, like, dealing with mechanics, moving mm-hmm. where you need to move, uh, doing the abilities when you need to do them, it's it's like a dance. And that's that's something that really sets PvE apart from PvP, because PvP, there's always unexpected things going on. Mm-hmm. When you're raiding, it's, it's, there's a dance. And yeah, there might be some random abilities that may pick you this time and may not pick you for others, like yeah. Iskar. It's... But for the most part, it's a dance, and you need to do it enough times in a c- consistent way with a consistent team to, to get to know that dance and take down the boss. Yeah, and that is where I think we're, we're coming up against the, the hardest challenge is doing that. Because, I mean, it took us a while to get consistent on Gorefiend, and even now, if people aren't focused, aren't really paying attention, we can just, you know, have a horrible time on that fight because there's so much stuff going on and everybody has to be on the same page and doing their role. But if someone doesn't drop the poop on the edge of the, the thing and, you know, just happens to be right where everybody lands when they get out of the stomach, guess what? That's a bunch of heals that shouldn't be going out because it's damage that could have been avoided, you know, in, in different things like that. Then there's RNG on that fight where I really want to be someone who goes in the stomach because, I'm a, a monk. I heal. I drop a statue in there. I heal one of those things. Another one's getting healed. And guess what? I just wiped out two of those ads in like five seconds. So right. take me versus like a disc priest who goes in who doesn't really have that same sort of healing ability. And you start getting more ads outside, which is challenging too. So it, it it's a give and take in that sense. But Bim, you're right. The dance is important, especially in those later bosses. I mean, we went up against Sir and then also Iskar. And I mean, we had a hell of a time with Sir But Sakrathar. Yeah, him. Uh, <laughs> but, uh, you know, we're, we're doing OK and we kind of get what we're doing. But it took us forever until we got to the point where people were you know, more and more comfortable with that. Iskar, we understand it, but again, lack of focus is what was really killing us the last two times we got in there. So, and I I hope it's 
clear that I'm not trying to get you to alienate your raid team or and I'm not trying to throw any shade towards people that I do like. I well, like the raid team and John, all of that. let's put it this way. I yell at them enough anyway. If they still like me after <laughs> that, I'm probably okay. That's true. I know how it can be. I, I quit after Accuzad yelled at me. Um, <laughs> But I, I am curious about touching on this subject a little bit. I'm, I'm curious about getting both of your opinions because this is a tricky question and I know you're going to have to probably be diplomatic a bit with your answer. Okay. Uh, but at a certain point, is it Blizzard's responsibility to deal with the personal responsibility or is it the raid team's responsibility to say, hey, we don't want to carry people anymore. I'll tell Fix you it. exactly the answer. <laughs> the answer is, is for this level of dif difficulty, Blizzard needs to make it less personal responsibility. And I know we've kind of touched on this before, and I know that we're going to get answers by people saying, maybe you should just be LFR raiders. No, that's not what I'm saying. That's not what we're <laughs> doing. We're actively trying to raid in the lowest, hey, we're actually a group getting together to raid. Right. Last expansion... When they introduced Flex, it was tuned great for us. We had challenges, but we were able to progress. Ever since this expansion came, there's so much personal responsibility in every single fight that it is negative or negatively tuned towards our raid group. Now, Bim, with Cat on Fire, I know that you've had... You know, like you said, you've been raiding for, you know, many expansions. I know that you've had uh, heroic or at this point mythic level raiders in your group and everything. Are you having kind of the same deal with the personal responsibility or even more so like what kind of range do you have in the group of experience for raids? Um, actually, most of the group is, as far as I know, is, is pretty is pretty experienced. Mm -hmm. Um. Like, there's some people in there who used to do heroics, but now they just want to be more more casual and relaxed. And, I mean, <laughs> we only raid one, one night a week, and so that's part of, yeah. of you know. My, uh, my experience with, um, <laughs> with this particular raid group is that um, I actually missed on the early, the early bosses. So, because we've just been so focused on on Archimon lately, I I haven't really I haven't killed most of the bosses personally, because mm -hmm. <laughs> I just came in at the end of that of that push towards Archimon. So, yeah. um, so there's uh, there are yes, we do get some help from people who are, are <laughs> mythic raiders. Um, we have some uh, people who also raid a heroic so we do definitely have an advantage so um i i you know i very much sympathize with with what's going on in Fert though and you know i i think you guys can get it you oh, can do it we will eventually <laughs> it's just everybody needs to be on board for it and yeah we need the to... whole thing about like watching a football game at the same time i mean i understand why that's a, a great thing to do while you're doing dailies while you're grinding, whatever. Um, but during raid, no, come on. Yeah, and, and <laughs> I'm, I'm not calling that out, but that was the first example that came to mind. I mean, there's there's just been stuff going on with everybody all this time. I'll call that out. What were you doing? <laughs> <laughs> At what point did you think that was an okay decision to make? Yeah. But you know what? Time's passed. Civ. I don't know. I don't know if it was Siv. I just wanted to call him out because he's the Dragon Soul guy. <laughs> or not Dragon Soul. Dragon Shire. That pre-show stuff. Dragon Shire Land? Sorry, Siv. You're great. But was it Siv? <laughs> I'm not saying who it is. It was totally Siv! It, it might have been. It might not have been. <laughs> John, for all you know, it could have been me, and I was being a complete schmuck by doing that. If it was you, Ben, you should be ashamed of yourself. Yeah, and you know how much I love football, so... Yeah. yeah, you do love football. <laughs> you do. Yeah, well, you know, I can. I remember seeing you at a football <laughs> game stand up and pump your arm victoriously at some point. Yeah, when... 
So, okay, funny story. There was a time where I was a, a Steelers fan, and uh, they might have been in the Super Bowl against the Cardinals, which is, you know, the home team. And John and his family might have been having a little get-together that my sister and I went to, and I was the only Steelers fan there. And uh, I might have been given crap the entire night as the Cardinals were winning most of the time. And then the Steelers won, and I had to reciprocate. That's all. End of that story. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, so, John, you want to come back and write with us? <laughs> well, I mean, that's what we were ultimately getting to, right? Is this was ultimately, you know, that was my last question. Is this all my fault? Just if I was there every head. week, uh, would it be okay? To be honest, having you there, because I've rated with you on multiple teams, and I've rated with you since Burning Crusade. You would have gotten incredibly frustrated and pissed off too. Uh, I never mind. I wasn't incredibly frustrated and pissed off. I kept a good demeanor most of the time. Anyways, you were busy watching football. Yes, I was busy watching football. <laughs> uh, anyways, um, if if we had you there, because I know that you you put in a lot of effort into your characters and everything when you are raiding. Um, having one more consistent person it, it would have helped i don't know if it would have gotten us over that hump but it would have helped yeah but now i'd be on my rogue and i wouldn't know what to do and i'd be just clumsily throwing knives around and hitting other people it'd be horrible yeah but you could be talking to morgram about it and he's doing pretty good <laughs> it'd be a bloodbath but, uh, but that being said, I I have a feeling that we're going to just start from the beginning again and go through, get uh, people who haven't been there consistently, get them the gear they need, hopefully get them a two set bonus uh, between puddles and uh, gore fiend, you know, uh, work on getting tomes for people so everybody has legendary rings. I mean, we're doing what we can at this point to gear everybody up to get us to the point where we need to be so that we can just to hopefully wipe the floor with all those higher end bosses. So that everybody can watch football and anime, talk about anime and whatever side projects they want to <laughs> do while raiding. Oh, yeah. I was putting together a model. Yeah. <laughs> yep. Legos <laughs> right mm -hmm. there on the side. Legos and raiding. Yep. It's the best way to do it. Uh, live stream yourself watching uh, all the Star Wars movies while raiding. It's, mm -hmm. it's all good stuff. Yeah. And OK, so the funny thing is, is uh, in the chat room, uh, Spaz Wesson said that there's always a point where you need to lay the hammer down. That's what we did in the forums. We had to call out behavior of the entire team and refocus it. And Wait, people read your forums, your guild forums. Not everyone. I was going to say. <laughs> I mentioned it in Raid that everyone should really look at it. But, I mean, it, the word started getting around that we had to have that come to Jesus moment. So. Well, Ben, I'm glad you brought up rogues because I want to talk about them. <laughs> <laughs> Good. <laughs> so I got on the alpha. Yeah. I yeah, tried out alpha rogue. Uh, and I've got some stuff to say. Okay. That alpha's early. <laughs> First of all, for anybody who thought, wow, alpha, uh, let me tell you, they, there is work still to be done. <laughs> there's um, construction signs all over the place. Yeah, yeah, there's a lot of construction signs. There's some missing textures. Yeah, the, you, you start out in a city, and if you turn, a big, huge section has no texture. It's like, <laughs> it's just right there. Um, um but that's fine. Yeah. It's alpha. That's exactly. that's to be expected. Blizzard has a really good sense of humor about it with their little under construction signs and all of that. I already see the chat room talking about rogues having the best class hall. No, they do not. We will <laughs> get to that later. But um, so yeah, I tried a rogue and I tried an outlaw rogue. Of course. Ooh. Did you choose the pirate talents? <laughs> There's going to be some notes submitted to Blizzard. Uh, I'm going to use my alpha status to... Uh, I'm going to use my Make alpha all the status to put in some, some, some questions, some thoughts. Okay. Um, it, right now, it's tricky, though, because I don't know what is something that's legitimately bugging me mm -hmm. versus what is something that is going to be changed. And this is just a placeholder. So, for example... 
we've talked a lot about the fact that rogues can pull out a hidden pistol and shoot somebody. Well, right now, the in-game animation for pull out a pistol and shoot somebody is a gigantic rifle appears in your hands <laughs> out of nowhere and you shoot somebody in what is the sloppiest looking animation I've ever seen in my life. I'm guessing that one might change. Pretty yeah. sure that's like, going to change. That? But on the off chance that that's something that they're like, no, we're proud of that. Like <laughs> That probably needs to change. That needs a, that needs a new animation. Um I'll tell you, one of the things that, that was getting me excited was the, the talent for Grappling Hook. Mm -hmm. uh, we talked about that, I think, last week or maybe the week before, where I was like, oh, Grappling Hook, that sounds so cool. That makes me maybe not feel bad about not getting double jump. Uh, I took that talent. I tried to use it in a couple different places, and it did not work at all, saying either the path wasn't acceptable or it was out of range, because it turns oh. out the range on that thing is super tiny. And then I finally got it to work, and my character shot straight up into the air and then straight back down in a stupid-looking jump arc, and I promptly changed that talent. See, it now looks... you know the pain that that uh, warriors have with Heroic Leap. And it mages have with Blink. Awful. It does not look good at all. It's one of the like worst-looking abilities I've ever seen. So, again, hopefully, going to get a, a tweak in the animation, but also hopefully in the usefulness because it is a lot of work for like no real yeah. benefit at all. I can't see any situation where I'm going to want that particular talent. So we'll, we're going to have to see. Um, there, there's, I'm making a list of notes. Well, uh, are you going to wait for like another update to go through to see if it's carried over? Uh, it depends. Uh, it depends. I'm going to try and spend a little more time with it so I feel like I can talk about it a little bit more. I mm -hmm. will say the the fewer buttons that I have as a result, I feel really good about the less buttons. Um, some of the new abilities and all that look really great and, and sound really great, and all of that stuff is very cool. But there's definitely some stuff where I think, oh my gosh, I really hope this changes before this goes live. <laughs> um but I'm I'm curious about uh, I'm curious about either of you, Bim. I don't know if you're even in the alpha or not. But did you get uh, did you get any time in it? Uh, no, I am not in the alpha, but I can't complain because Overwatch. But <laughs> yeah, you can't. <laughs> nope. nope. Uh, but I have been watching a lot of uh, videos that people have been posting about the alpha, mostly about the class halls and the artifacts and the lore behind those artifacts, which I won't spoil. Uh, and it, it all looks great. I'm really happy about, about there being so many class specific mm -hmm. uh, content that we'll be getting. Um, I've always loved the class specific quest lines in the past. And um, it's just makes me want to roll every class just to see it all. Yeah. You know, it's funny you say that because well, first of all, to, to John, your point about stuff not being fully implemented yet, uh, I did make a mage, because guess what? That's my favorite class, even though I'm playing a monk. Um, and so I'm like, okay, cool. Oh, awesome. It set me up as a fire mage. That makes me happy. And then I go to look and, uh, you know, just kind of switch to see what abilities are in each uh, spec. And guess what? Frost and Arcane aren't even available yet. So it's an alpha, guys. <laughs> it's under construction. Yeah. Um, but, uh, okay, so talking about different classes and everything like that, uh, I have actually leveled my six tune to 100 now. Uh, wow. I got my nice. priest up a couple days ago, actually. And it's one of those things that I didn't think that I was really going to do this expansion, but the, the whole elixir of rapid mind trick is the way that I'm just, you know, blowing through that content and leveling everything up. But a lot of it comes to the fact that I want to see all those different, you know, class artifact quests and, and see everything that goes on. And John, don't hate me for saying this. And Bim, please just try not to throw stuff at me next time you see me. But I'll be okay if at the end of the expansion, next expansion, if there's a big lull in content so that I can see that stuff. No, I agree. No, I'm a horrible I, I, person. You are a horrible that. person. And I, I am going to like end of expansion lulls. 
because then I feel like, okay, this is the time where I don't feel rushed. I can do all these other things that I meant to do before. So, yeah. Then yeah. you should feel bad. I do. I really do. Because <laughs> this is the first expansion where I am done and want the next one to come. I mean, uh, every other expansion lull, I've leveled other characters. I've had fun. I've still logged in every day and done stuff. And this is the first time that I'm just kind of like, I don't there's nothing drawing me to the game except what is now is the next expansion and what's being promised for it. I mean, don't get me wrong. If the content's good and they're not making me really want the next expansion, then they can have whatever lull they want. You know, that's, that's a big part of this game. If they can put in content that is so repeatable and so good, Mm -hmm. they can buy themselves as much time as they possibly need. The problem is is that Blizzard has not been great about giving us regular, consistently engaging content while we're in that lull between last patch and next expansion. So I, as much as I want to just go with the gut reaction of, Ben, you're a horrible person, <laughs> if they nail it with Legion and Endgame and all of that, mm-hmm. then they can take all the time in the world to get to the next expansion. But let's be realistic. I'm just glad that Ben <laughs> that you agree with me because I do feel bad for saying that, especially right now. But I mean, if it gives me a chance to see some of this really great content that was crafted for the next expansion, I'm excited. I mean, I think uh, as soon as they announced the artifact weapons way back at Gamescom, John, I told you I want to play through the story of each artifact weapon for the classes that I play. Yeah, I don't know when or how or why I'll ever do you know tanking on a on a monk but i want to see what that quest line is and okay. it's going to be available to me because i have that class so yay well i have even more content than you because i only have three level 100s right now so yay. i got all the time in the world yep there you go <laughs> Uh, so, Bim, are you leveling up your shaman then to start off with? Probably. Um, and, you know, it's a tough call between my warrior and my shaman. I, I love to tank on my warrior, but um, I'm afraid of tanking raid bosses, with especially with groups that I don't haven't been raiding along with. Mm-hmm. Um, and it's a lot easier to get into, to learn dungeons and to learn raids as a DPS or a healer. So I can just like sort of stand back and watch how it happens. And yeah, I know there's video guides online, but it's not the same as actually being in the fight. Yeah. Um, so yeah, I'll probably go with my my shaman. And uh, I've actually I really like that the class hall for the shaman is at the maelstrom. Oh, cool. And uh, yeah, it's just like crashing waves everywhere. And I <laughs> wow, mean, it's what's really that like to have a cool class hall. <laughs> <laughs> hey, I actually like the Dalaran sewers. I, I just like Dalaran as a whole, and uh, I hear it's changed, and I can't wait to see how it's how it's changed. But uh, yeah, hey. I, you know, I, I saw the, the the video for the class uh, for the Rogue Hall. And the sewers are are I don't know. There's like all these piles of gold and these these ornate. Unrealistic. You cannot have a pile of gold around rogues. Right? <laughs> Would not like, last. Why no, is that just sitting gold. there? Exactly. That was my what first question. I wanted to go in there and be like, the hell is there gold lying around for? I'm a rogue. I would just like, <laughs> oh no. Just start picking it all up. Go. I will say this. Okay, I'm being a little unfair to the rogue class hall. I am a little bit annoyed that when they said rogues are going to be in the sewers and all the rogues were like, we don't want to be in the sewers. What are you doing? Stop putting us in the damn sewer. Because there is a perfect place for them. And Blizzard was like, we're going to have a dialogue. We're thinking about it. And it turns out we're thinking about it is we're putting you in the sewers. Shut up. Um, But I will say I do like that area in Dalaran. It's it's okay. They put in a couple things that I really like. There's a hidden bookcase. That's neat. You have to pick a lock to get into it. That's cool. There is a lot of gold laying around. I have mixed feelings on this. (laughs) Um, The the only part that I don't like is that it could be like 
It could be the underground city. They could call it anything, but instead it's the sewers. And the only thing I think about that entire time is, great, my character smells like poo all the time now. <laughs> well, like, I want to go hang out in my class hall. I guess I'm going to smell like poo. She did already. Shut up. Uh, so <laughs> that's that's the thing. And it, we have discovered with some Twitter interactions that perhaps I have uh, a sewer bias. <laughs> because it turns out when somebody brought up the Ninja Turtles as, to try and get me on board with the sewer, I realized that that is the thing I have always hated about Ninja Turtles is that they lived in the sewer. Because I was like, there is no way they would have any friends. You can't April be and stealthy. Jo- yes, and you're not a ninja. Like, people are going to be like, smell that? I smell shit. And then all of a sudden, <laughs> like, there's turtles. Four turtles. And... <laughs> That's all I can think about the entire time. <laughs> so until the lore writes in that, like, mages don't actually poo, they just magic away or something. Well, they do. <laughs> then I'm just, I'm not necessarily cool with being in the sewer. <laughs> they I wish created, it wasn't the sewer. No, they or, create a portal to Poo Island and just, <laughs> you know, <laughs> need I explain more? As a mage, I mean, I'll trust you. That's what Jane has been doing this whole time. <laughs> is she's created a subtle, sneaky portal from all the restrooms all over Azeroth <laughs> to uh, to uh, Orgrimmar. It's just slowly... And they're all hidden areas of Orgrimmar. So when you're in Orgrimmar, you're just constantly going, what is that? It smells worse than <laughs> usual. It smells worse than a rogue. Ugh. What's going on? <laughs> uh... I, I don't know. It's like I wish I wish you could go in and I like maybe you pass briefly through the sewers and then go into the secret area that's all nice and fancy because to me that's a rogue like and I understand rogues are different things to different people but like we lie cheat and steal our way into luxury not lie cheat and steal our way into living in a damn sewer. So I, I want to go into this nice fancy place. And they do kind of have that. If you go to where the actual like gathering of the rogues are, it's got like this massive chandelier and there's a clock that's kind of annoying because it's really loud and uh, <laughs> like a bunch of nice things all around. But it's still in a sewer. We'll see how it looks when it's finished. They're not done. There's big under construction signs. Everywhere, now, if so. there was actually just one tiny spot, just, just the tiniest spot, in the corner where there is actually a piece of poo, I'm would out. you switch back to your monk? Yes, I'd go back to my monk. <laughs> now, I'm not saying yeah, actually inside the class hall, breaker. just close. They, like, it's even guarded by people. You get a summons from somebody from Ravenholt. Like, Ravenholt is this giant secretive manor hidden in the mountains. A manor, an estate, like, that's a cool place for a rogue. They're giving us pirate talents. Being on a ship would be a better place for a rogue. There's all these things that are way better, and they stuck us in the sewer. I'm going to stop complaining about it, I promise. So it's like, uh, excuse me, uh, ma'am, I'm from uh, I'm from Ravenholt Manor. Uh, I, perhaps you've heard of us. We're we, it, a giant mansion. It We have... St- you know, treasures everywhere. Come join us in this. Uh, would would you would you like to come join us in our meeting hall? Oh, at, at the manor? No, we're 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 in the sewer. Well, did the... Rathian burn down Ravenholt Manor? Did he? The rose they can. Rebuild. I remember he was there, but I don't remember him well, burning it down. He got pissed down. that he was captive there. Well, John never finished us. that quest he line. He gave so. us uh, he gave us uh, some weapons. He was he's <laughs> basically a rogue. Here, here, have some daggers. I thanks for for yeah. holding me. <laughs> Made from my cool. dad. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. Dadgers. Uh, <laughs> I don't know. It's fine. But you remember that part in Harry Potter where they had to flush themselves down the toilet to get to the <laughs> Ministry of Magic or whatever? That, that bugs me too. Would just you be don't... cool if you got that? You just stand on a toilet or you go into an outhouse, pull a lever, and then you're in your guild hall? Or I just whatever? don't like. I believe toilets and bathrooms and sewers serve the function that they serve. They're important. I don't dislike them. But the only people who should be going there are authorized workers and Mike Rowe. <laughs> and that's it. it. It should only be the, the DPW. You know what? I take it all back. Blizzard, if you want to win me over with this whole thing, put in an NPC and call him Mike Rogue. <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> and I will be totally on board. Hi, I'm Mike Rogue, and uh, this is Dirty Jobs. <laughs> yes, exactly. <laughs> Put him in the entryway. I'm on board. I'm all for it now. <laughs> I'm actually okay with that. Yeah, it's still- I might have to make a rogue for that. (laughs) That's all it would take to get me back on board. (laughs) Rogue's the working class of Azeroth. Not really. Yeah. We're we're in the sewer. What are you doing? Sitting in your mage tower? (laughs) Yeah, pooping in the Freaking elitist upper class. (laughs) (laughs) I'm going to magic me some comfort. (laughs) What do you think of your class hall, Ben? I haven't gone there yet. Way to I, not I, be into the cool part of the expansion. Well, that's what I plan on doing this weekend. Okay. I, I made my character. I, you know, kind of dinked around, set up my my uh, action bar, was going to switch to a different spec. I'm like, oops, <laughs> and then went to bed so I could take a nap so I can uh, be awake for raid the next night or th- that night. Guys, I really want Mike Roke to be an NPC. <laughs> it's got to happen. I don't care if I never get an item named after me or an NPC named after me. <laughs> I don't care if Blizzard never listens to another word I say. I will let go of my hopes for a Lazy River in Orgrimmar. I will let go of my hopes for uh, Murlocs playable. All I want is Mike Rogue. <laughs> and maybe have a Hearthstone card named after him at some point. <laughs> And what does he do? Clean up the board? That'd be pretty good. Yeah. Yeah. Just wipes out the... Shovels, uh, like, it it loads the enemy, uh... No. It puts a bunch of slimes on your side, fills the board with, (laughs) with, with, like, gross slimes, and you can use them, but at the end, he starts shoveling them over to the enemy side, so they start getting them. So you have to use it fast enough. Yeah, that's the balance. Okay, make it happen. Micro. Just... <laughs> <laughs> oh, that'd be great. Absolutely wonderful. Now I want someone special for all the class halls. <laughs> right. I think Mike Rogue is the only one that really works. Well, all right. Everybody send in your own personal choice of uh, of NPC. And what they would do if you can think of a good one. The only other one I like. Go ahead. I thought Monk, based on the TV series Monk. (laughs) Just kind of standing there all nervous. (laughs) Yeah, that's it. That's what I got. It's not very good. It's not as good. It's not Mike Rogue caliber. No, No, not at all. (laughs) Bim, what do you? What were you gonna say? Well, as far as the. the class halls, the paladin class hall looks amazing. Too bad I don't really play a paladin, but their class hall is going to be filled with so many NPCs. Um, just you know, of course, lots of lots of paladins and lore. Uh, so there'll be, I don't know, I'd, I can't list off who all the NPCs are, and I don't want to spoil people anyway. Well, we but. appreciate that. Some people <laughs> but yeah, don't I'm care, looking- but. I'm looking like forward to, to seeing. Oh, okay. I, I personally, I love spoilers. In reference to your last show, oh. I'm all for spoilers. But I respect other people not wanting spoilers. Thank you. <laughs> Two thumbs up. way up. I support that. I do too, which is weird because we're on opposite sides. We got uh, we got Garona half orkin. <laughs> Naturally. She's half orc, Ben. Really? <laughs> I thought she was well, half pest uh, pest control. When I say her, what she is half to you, it almost sounds like I'm saying her full last name. Yeah. She's half orc, Ben. Ben. <laughs> um, but no, seriously, you have Mike Rogue, and then you have the half orcan, which she's killing bugs, like roaches and stuff. It's just coming together for you. We also have Vanessa Van Cleef. Okay. She tried to kill us once. Well, I guess Wait, so she well. lived. Apparently, <laughs> maybe. <laughs> oh my God! Only spoilers. rogues will know. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, all these dead people coming back. 
Well, they I, have to populate I already them saw somehow. the red shirt guy tweeting out saying, "Hey, why is this guy? Why is this NPC in this class hall? Didn't he die?" It was only <laughs> oh, a setback. Oh, yeah, I feel <laughs> yeah, like exactly. The There's answers, lots of setbacks. I feel like the answer to that question is always, "Or did they?" <laughs> <laughs> Well, you know what? This is the expansion for dead people coming back. I mean, Illidan's back. Right? Yeah. There we go! <laughs> Every <laughs> Azeroth got a mass res. <laughs> <laughs> That's the true magic of Gul'dan. <laughs> he brings um, life! <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I can't wait till I see uh, Kael'thas in mine. That's gonna be pretty cool. Okay. Like his he head's said, off. He shows up. He's and got he gives these... you a full, full of <laughs> Yeah, he's carrying his head around with a giant like shard in his chest. He has to like cover up his 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 neck hole and be like, yeah. "Magister's Terrace was only a setback." He's like a Futurama character at this yeah. point. Yeah, he's in a jar. <laughs> I was just trying to remember the things that Kale Thos says. Ben, you'll appreciate this. I don't even know how I'm going to say this out loud because I can't even pronounce it right in my head. But I was like, what is it that Kael Thoth says? Is it a lone balloon batafa? Matata? <laughs> <laughs> it means no worries. <laughs> so anyway, there you go. Everybody, what does Kael Thoth say? <laughs> Send your best impersonations of Kael Thoth. What does Kael Thoth say? Wilds. Come on. Uh, one of my favorite things about the guild hall. There's a lot of unique vendors in the order guild. hall. Whatever. Class hall, class whatever. hall, something like that. Guild hall. I'm in a guild of rogues, Ben. <laughs> we we call it whatever we want. <laughs> yeah, we, I call it home. Yeah, I call it a sewer. <laughs> <laughs> uh, there's a lot of unique vendors in the uh, in the hall, whatever hall you might want to call it. Mm -hmm. um, the rogue one gets uh, Grifta. He's back. You remember him? Kind of. He's the guy who sells you all the worthless necklaces and chat <laughs> Okay, yeah. Um, and I like him because he's there. He's got exorbitantly priced goods that are of uh, no real value. And I was looking at him the other day and I said, you know what? He is like the alternate reality version of Slashloot.com. Yes, he is. Because when you think about it, Slashloot.com sells you quality products at a reasonable price. In fact, if you wanted an Azeroth Roundtable t-shirt, you could go to Slashloot.com. That shirt does not cost any gold. No. No gold spent at Slashloot.com. Uh, you, you pay with dollars. Oh, okay. other money if it's internationally available. I don't, I don't know. Uh, but if you say, John, but Grifta sells necklaces and Slashloot.com selling t-shirts. Yeah, John, uh, Grifta sells necklaces and Slashloot.com sells t-shirts. Well, I've got a solution for you, Ben. Really? If you go to geekasylum.etsy.com, you can pick up the official Azeroth Roundtable necklace. Also, does not cost you any gold. Also a quality product. I would like to say that, yes, it is. Between both of those sites, we have created the anti-Grifta. Yeah. It's not a troll, but it's just as cool. So which one has the goatee since it's an alternate reality? It'd Grifta, be Grifta, right? Because of the evil? Yeah, you can't see it. Okay, cool. Just making sure. It's not us. No. No, I have a beard now. See, I've got the, the side part. Yeah. See, yeah, no, no goatees. We're good. Yeah, we're fine. Uh, so, Bim, thank you so much for joining us. It has been a pleasure. And I, again, I'm sorry that you had your 16 seconds of fame on the BlizzCon episode. <laughs> it's all good. All right. Where can people find you if they're looking for you? Well, they can find me here in the chat room on Friday nights. <laughs> that is true. <laughs> so, so come to the live shows because we have a lot of fun in the chat room. Yeah. She and makes you can find it me fun. on Twitter. No, well, mostly it's mostly it's Draven and Erlina. I could keep going. <laughs> She's got favorites, folks. She's calling <gasps> them out. <laughs> uh, you can find me on Twitter at Shieldspec. 
And also, aren't you in game? Like as a follower? Yeah. I don't know how that happened, but yeah. <laughs> okay. Well, you need yeah. to use the same context to get Mike Rogue added to the game. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, just change your name to Mike Rogue. Yes, <laughs> yes I'll, I'll totally change my name. <laughs> and then, then it'll happen. Perfect. Mike Rogue. Uh, John, how about you? How can people find you? Well, in addition to this show, you can also find me on CORE! CORE! Likes it when I yell the name, so there's me yelling the name. Uh, that is a Heroes of the Storm podcast, and uh, that's part of the Frog Pants Network. That's me, Bo Schwartz, and Scott Johnson. Uh, now, you can also find me at least one more time on the NVIDIA stream. That is yeah. Saturday from 3 to 6 Pacific Standard Time. Uh, tomorrow, and for those of you who are listening to this after Saturday, uh, it's already over. Uh, that is going to be our last episode on twitch.tv slash nvidia but if you enjoy that all hope is not lost we're working on something even better coming yeah. up right after it so uh that will still be around but uh you know join us tomorrow it's gonna be fun it's gonna be high jinx Ooh. as opposed to low jinx yeah no low jinx allowed mm -mm. i you know i saw a low jinx once it was not fun ate a man and half i don't know what that means <laughs> ben where can people find you ain't a man in half <laughs> don't, like don't does that mean don't, he, don't he think about it bit don't. the middle until the man was in half <laughs> that seems to make the most sense to me okay I'm it's not what i pictured that. when i said it but makes a lot of sense to me now all right uh if you're looking for me you can follow me on twitter i am at ben the mage i also do uh, other shows like uh, battle pets and geektopia uh in fact i'm recording battle pets later tonight Episode. Busy night. Yes, very busy night. Um, this show, however, you can follow on Twitter. We are at AzrothRT. Uh, if you're looking for past episodes, like if you want to hear Bim's first appearance or anything else that John and I have done under the Azroth Roundtable banner, you can go to AzrothRoundtable.com. Uh, check out TuneIn, iTunes, or Stitcher. We should be in all of those places as well. If you have any questions, comments, uh, want to tell us why you think Mike Rogue is the best rogue, go ahead and email us at azrothroundtable at gmail.com. And of course, uh, last but not least, our intro contains music from Volatile Reaction by Kevin McLeod. You can find more of his music at incopytech.com. Mike Rogue for the rogue. <laughs> can we call this episode Dirty Jobs with Mike Rogue? I'm going to. <laughs> yes. I actually, yeah, I uh, originally named it the Portal to Pooh Island. <laughs> but we're nah. switching that to Dirty Jobs with Mike Rogue. Poop Mike portals. Rogue. I also had tentatively uh, Rathion gave me Dadgers. <laughs> Ben's a sucker for a really awful pun. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I am. <laughs> and um, the word poo. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, apparently. I don't use it enough in our titles. <laughs> Just the next episode, just called Poo. 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 Bim, thanks for joining us. It was a lot of fun. That went sure. super fast. It did. It did. It really did. It's also come to my attention that Siv was the football guy. <laughs> it, he was. He totally was. It was all him. Yeah, we're sitting there in the middle of, a, of, of an Ixar fight, and all of a sudden, oh my god, I can't believe that just happened! I'm like, oh god. What, was he watching the Green Bay Lions game? Um, I think so. it was whatever was on. No, it was the uh, Bronco game from Sunday. Ah, okay. Oh, it was even an old game and you had to watch it right then and there. Well, no, it was it was live on Sunday. Oh, because sun you... Sunday is a football day traditionally. Yeah. Thought you were reading last night. Well, yeah, but last night was the follow up of the come on, guys, let's get our shit together. Was everybody miserable? You said it wasn't very fun. We ran into a lot of the same issues. Ah. Oh, Broncos so watching Patriots. football again? Was. No, no, it's just, <laughs> again, personal responsibility, man. We're having issues. Oh, they have so a responsibility to football. Yeah, so pretty much. Siv doesn't listen live. I wish he did, too. I He's going to hear it so on the, on the uh, replay. what he would have said. <laughs> 
All right, guys. Well, I have another show to do in a little bit, so I'm going to go ahead and uh, end the call and the stream and all that stuff. So uh, thanks for listening, everybody. <laughs> she wasn't <laughs> waving to me, but I waved back. Whatever, yeah. Sarah. Oh, I know who you're waving it's at. It's okay. Yeah, she just got home from the con, and I also want to find out uh, what happened and how the day went. So uh, ending the stream. Thanks, chat room. You guys are awesome. Uh, take care. Bye, chat room. Bye, everybody. Finger guns. Finger guns. <laughs>